Hey everyone, it is Saturday and I am finishing up the rest of the stuff that I did not finish up last night. I am still very tired from yesterday. I was up from 6 a.m., 7 a.m. all the way until probably about 1 in the morning just trying to finalize as much as I could. But I wanted to do these last night and I just held them for today. Now, quick update. I will not be doing my tote bags for this market because I read where you weren't supposed to wash the tote bags because it would affect how the print transfers over onto the, the bags. So I ended up scrapping it and they will be ready for the next market for sure because where i order my bags from they come real quick so it's not like i have to worry about waiting weeks and weeks and weeks for them to come in so fingers well fingers crossed because <laughs> this could be the one time where they don't come in time but <laughs> I'm going to, I already placed the order for new bags and I will be creating the designs for those and they will be ready for next week's market. But for this market, it does take one item away that I have to carry with me, but that's okay because I have other new products that I'm, I'm doing. But I did order some last minute packages from Amazon and they came today. I got these bags here just to test them out. They're 50 in the pack. I think they're 50 each, but they're three different sizes. So I got these so that I could put the scent cards in them. That way the scents don't fade out like it did the last time when I tried to do it. And I also bought, can't quite remember exactly what I bought. I also bought these test strips here so that people can smell the diffusers. Um, I'm going to have them sitting there on a tray. And then finally, I bought these trays to put on the table. And the reason why I bought these trays is I was, I did a chat GPT and I asked, how can I display my samples, my testers? And I bought this tray here to display my samples on them. So I think that's pretty cool. It makes it a little more organized. So if you see like a tray there and you see the sample bottles, which I'm going to make a little later, and one of the diffusers, which I'm gonna bring reads for them and put in and the test strips on here. So that was like a last minute thought to do. And these look pretty decent. So they are black, so they'll probably be the only black display on my table. They came two in a pack just in case, but I think I really just need one. But I am getting more and more nervous as it gets closer and closer to tomorrow. And it's insane because I've done three other markets before, but I don't think I was nearly as nervous the day before as I am now. I think it's because I'm using a tent for the first time tomorrow and I have to put it up. So I'm like nervous that I'll do the wrong thing and something will happen, but I'm just nervous. But I'm going to go ahead and do these. It might take me a couple of tries to do this. Then I'm going to pack the bag for tomorrow. I, I did do a checklist this morning. So I got that out of the way and I put everything on there that I'm taking and I'm taking a good amount of inventory. I just hope that everything now with the new products, everything fits into 
the two totes because I'm trying my best to take two tomorrow and not three because I do have to take the tent and I was thinking about leaving it in storage but once I was done with it but seeing as I need it for next weekend and then the weekend after that I might as well struggle and bring it back up to my apartment and which is going to be so much to bring down but struggle bring it back up the three flights of stairs to my apartment and then after the last market i'll make two stops and i'll drop it off at the storage unit and then come home with the rest of the stuff so it's going to be a lot of heavy lifting the next three weeks which i should put muscle on by then but <laughs> but enough talking let me try and attempt to do this heat gun stuff. I did the best I could putting it on. I'm not used to it, so I need practice. But I'm also starting to think maybe I don't need to put them on, seeing as when you go to take them off, the plastic is so strong that it kind of loosens up the cap. And I don't want anyone to like open it up and then have the room spray all over them. So. Just gonna test them out for now, and then I probably the next batch I make, I'll probably just not have the plastic on it. So, this is done, and now I'm going to go fill up the sandbags and get them ready. And then I have to pack the bag, and I'll probably pack the products for tomorrow to get it out the way. I'm still very, very tired, but at least I don't have to do nearly as much as. I had to yesterday and the days before. Hey everyone, it is the morning of the market and I am getting myself ready to get out the door because I'm running a little behind schedule. <laughs> it's been a rough morning, <laughs> but I'm running a little behind schedule so I have to take all this stuff downstairs and get ready to hop in a cab and head on over because I'm supposed to be there at nine o'clock and I'm supposed to be set up by 10.15. And I think it starts officially at 10.30. But just wanted to do this opening here and say hello to everyone. And I am going to get stuff downstairs right now. It's a lot of heavy stuff. And I'm not looking forward to it. But I have my back brace on. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Now if you are new here, my name is Tammy. And I am the owner of Lanesa Marie Candle Co. And I welcome you all into my little world that I've put together of starting my small business and running my small business. And of course, everyone else, I truly, truly appreciate you coming back. Now, I'm going to cut it here because I have to get out the door like right now so i am here at the market and i just got set up i didn't quite pick out what i wanted to put up there so i just winged it for the most part but this is the end result a little different from how i staged it but that's okay all the products are up there I think my table is a little too far back, but it's kind of too late to push it up. But yeah, this is the end result. Okay, I am here at the market. It just started and people are walking around. They have such smug looks on their face, but I just finished setting up. And I'm sorry I didn't show you guys the setup. I hope you can hear me. I'm trying to speak as loud as possible without being too much of a disturbance to anyone around me. But I'm just sitting here. It is the start of the market. And 
I have everything, like I said, set up and ready to go. And I pretty much had to wing some of it. Pretty much had to wing some of it. But I think it looks pretty good. I have some new displays on there. And the new products are sitting nicely. So, sorry if I'm not looking. I'm just making sure everything is straight. It is a little bit of a wind. So, it's not too bad. So, at least it's not going to be extremely hot today. It's like 70 degrees. But I will be checking in later. Yeah, we'll see how we do this market. I'm hoping to make a couple of sales. If not, I will definitely take away something from this market as always, like every other market. But we'll see what happens. So I will check in with you guys later. I am on my phone, so I'm trying to preserve some of the battery juice. Even though I have my even though I have my power battery right there. But this is the market. For the most part. And it is in Brooklyn and it stretches all the way around the museum. And the museum is back there. So, so not bad. We'll see how this one goes and see if I sell any of the new products. I know one thing, it is definitely a lot of scent around because I have all my candles, well, at least one of each, open up. And then the reed diffusers is going. So, yeah, it's a lot of scent going on. I will check in with you guys later. Hey everyone, I'm checking back in and it is 2.30, a couple of minutes after 2.30. I made three sales so far today. It's going kind of slow, but there is a lot of people here and they're walking around, they're picking up people's items, including my own. There's a lot of people smelling the scents. I did manage to sell two of the new products. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. So that just tells me that people actually like it and it's not just me that likes it. But I have, I believe two hours, three hours now. I have three hours to go, three, four, yeah, three hours to go. And we'll see if anything picks up. I'm trying to make my vendor feedback and at this rate, it was looking like I'm not going to make that feedback, but I did get some nice um, notes from here of what I can improve on, what I can do better, how I can present stuff a little bit better, and I've been trying to talk to people a little more because, as you know, I am an introvert, and I don't really talk to people as much as... I feel I should talk to people. So I'm still here. It's going a little slow. But I will check in probably at the end or towards the end and give you guys another update. So it is 4.30 now. It's getting close to the end of the market. And I made a couple of more sales. The wind is really picking up. I mean, really picking up. But made a couple of more sales today and I'm quite pleased but I'm also shocked because I had no idea that my passion sunrise candle would be the hit for today so and I didn't bring enough inventory for it but I'll talk about that more in the recap of this market but it's winding down it's like 4 30 so we got about an hour to go and we'll see what happens after that well within that hour but hopefully i can sell another candle or another room spray or even a reed diffuser so we'll see but that is it for this check-in
everyone and welcome back. So this is the recap of the market that I just did called Brooklyn Pop-Up Market. And it is actually two days later that I'm recording this because yesterday was Monday and I needed to rest. I was really exhausted after carrying up all my inventory and all the stuff that I bought with me to the market up the stairs. I was just exhausted at the end of the day. So I decided to take Monday off and just lay in bed, relax, and not do anything business-wise. But I am here to give you guys the recap of that day and what happened. And yeah, so let's just hop right into it. All right, so there wasn't much footage to take of the market, and I'll explain why. So this market, I actually went by myself, and I was there all day by myself. So I really didn't get a chance to film much of the other vendors and the market itself. I was more focused on my table and making sure I covered anyone that came across. Now, I had got up around 640 and only to realize that I did not enter any of the new products into my square. So I had to quickly enter them into my square. On top of that, my stomach was acting up. So my stomach was bothering me. So I ended up not leaving at the time that I wanted to, which was 8 a.m. to get there by 9. So that I have a full hour to set up my tent and everything that needed to go up. So my sister helped me bring the stuff downstairs. And I headed on to the cab, packed it up, and I was on my way. And I ended up getting there about 7 minutes after 9 a.m. So it wasn't that bad. When I got there, there were some vendors from my community that was already set up and setting up. And then some were like me just getting there. And I met the the person, um, I don't quite know his title of the community, but he's the one who approved everyone that was going to be participating in this market. His name is Neil and I met him and he helped me put up my tent and it was the first time I ever put up this tent. I ordered a tent from Quick Tent and it was my first time opening it up because if you're in New York there's really no place to open up a tent in the city and I kind of attempted to just see if I could do it by myself in the courtyard where I live at but it was kind of a fail because I didn't get the tent completely up so Sunday was the day that I first got it open up with the cover and everything on it so he helped me and someone else helped me put up the tent for the first time and honestly the tent is easy to put up it has buttons it snaps all you have to do is pull the legs and it snaps it's just getting it spread out is really the issue and then once you close it up he told me you can leave the cover on and it should be fine and it closes up so the next time you use it you could just open it back up like that once the tent was open and done I started doing my table now I did have visions of it of how I wanted it set up at, at the last minute I changed my mind and I set it up the way you saw it set up in the previous shots but I set up and the day was a nice sunny day it's about 70 degrees and there was a light breeze so it wasn't hot or anything which was perfect and I had all this space behind me because I've never had a uh, 10 by 10 space to myself before so I had all this space behind me with this one six foot table and I have vendors on both sides and all of them were very nice very friendly and throughout the market I actually ended up talking to a couple of the vendors surrounding me so I got to see their products, I got to ask them about their products, and I even bought a cookie from one of the vendors over across from me that I took home, which was so good. It was a Nutella cookie, and it was so good. She makes her cookies and her baked products herself, so they were really good, and I wanted to save it until I got home because I really wasn't, <laughs> I really wasn't hungry. 
until probably about towards the end of the market. But it was a nice smooth day. It wasn't what I expected, but there was a lot of people there because it's right outside of the Brooklyn Museum. So it's a nice flow of traffic that goes through there and then people come to hang out and they sit on the stairs that was behind me. If you saw in the video, there's a like little landing stairs, platforms behind me that people just sit, relax, eat. So it was a nice crowd, but it wasn't a crowd that was looking to like really make purchases, I don't think. Or maybe it was just specific purchases that they wanted to make. I have taken some notes here and I'm going to quickly run over the notes that I put down because I did learn some things and I did make some sales and I did get swindled out of five dollars and we'll talk about that but let's get into some of the takeaways that I took from Brooklyn pop-up market all right so like I said I got there around 9 907 908 so I finished setting up stuff around 10.19 and was ready to go. I had my square and everything ready in case there was a purchase to be made right away because that did happen to me in my first market that I've ever done. So I had my square ready. I had everything set. Decorations was the last thing I was putting up and then the little tags that I have on the table. So the one thing I did notice is that my tent was kind of low so I'm 6'2 and I have to bend down to go in and out of my tent. Now once in the tent there's plenty of space in there but I had to bend down every time I went in and out of the tent and I actually hit my head a couple of times because I had to remember oh yeah my tent is kind of low. Now I don't know if that is the standard of how it is. I don't know if I should invest in another tent that that raises a little higher but the holes on these legs they have three holes but it seems like the holes are like so close together that it's not really much of a lift in the tent that was one of the things that I noticed on Sunday the other thing was I had my table so far back and didn't realize it that I'm looking around and everybody else has their tables close up to the front of the tent. So I ended up having to, after I put everything on the table, carefully slide it up so that it went up to the front so that people can have easier access. So those are the two things that I noticed right away at the beginning of the market. The shortness of the entrance get going in and out of the tent and that my table was too far back. So the market was kind of slow in the beginning. There was a few people walking. They was walking around as we were setting up doing the final touches and it was kind of slow. I didn't make my first two sales until around 1219 and it was a mother daughter who was going into the museum to spend some time in there and they were my first sales of the day so the mom bought a reed diffuser which I'm so happy that someone bought the reed diffuser and I actually liked the smell of it and I knew it was gonna be Paloma peaceful Paloma because that one is so the smell of it just takes you away it's so fruity it's so sweet it's so passionate it's like it just takes you away the scent and it fills up the room quite nicely and she was looking for something to put in her bathroom which a reed diffuser will work fine in there so she bought a reed diffuser and her daughter bought a passion sunrise my passion sunrise wax melt which I think is the first one I have ever sold. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head, but I think that's the first one I ever sold was the Passion Sunrise Wax Melt. But other than that, this it was kind of slow. So my sales kind of came like hours a after each other. It wasn't like boom, boom, boom. It was hours throughout the day that my sales came. I did get a lot of compliments on my display and how I set up. There was a lot of downtime and 
you know, vendors were going from booth to booth in our little area there. And we were just talking to each other and seeing what each other sold and things like that. And I met a nice lady who she does crochet hats and she sells them and she also does crochet sweaters and shirts and and she even had a skirt there that she crocheted so she does all of this stuff and then my neighbor next to me she makes jewelry she blows out these little crystal jewelry um crystal items that she puts on jewelry and they're like hanging earrings which they look so adorable and then the lady next to me she also makes jewelry as well and then two spots over was another candle maker that also that obviously makes candles so I finally made my way over to her booth and I talked to her and she was she was so sweet and so friendly and so positive I want to gravitate more towards positive people because there's just too many negative people in the world. So I we started talking a little bit and then she came over to my booth and she looked at it and she complimented me on how well and how detailed I put my booth together and she wasn't the only one. I had a couple of other people that stopped by and talked about how well put together my table was and the detail in my products and things like that and to me it kind of shocks me because in my mind it's not good enough and it's never going to be good enough and that's my perfectionist kicking in but it's never going to be good enough for me i'm always going to have some issue with something or I'm always going to try and tweak something and make it better. I don't know it's with everything creative that I do because I just can't grasp that this is it. This is the final result. But it was nice getting the compliments on my table and my setup and how I, I put it together. And I'm thankful for people recognizing it and seeing it and being and giving the compliments basically. So some other things I did manage to write down that I picked up was maybe getting another tent. I still have to figure it out. Um, I have to figure out the height of this one before I go and spend money on another tent. The other thing I was thinking about since I have the tent now was putting getting one of those another banner made so that I can hang it in the back of the tent so that people can see that because maybe people are not really looking down low at my table runner so they'll have the banner and then I think I could put you know my social on there social media handle on there I can put the Etsy shop on there which I really wish I had my own website but baby steps to get there and then the other thing which I was already thinking about was small four ounce frosted jars because one of the ladies that purchased a candle from me she asked if I had my 10 ounce candle in a smaller size and I said no it's something that I'm working on in the future though so that is a good thing and I think I can offer those as a gift set or maybe in a gift basket or something. So there is endless possibilities with those small candles. Now as far as my sales go, I did make sales. I made seven sales on the day and it came out to $189. So I did make my vendor fee back and I did actually make my cab fee back. Yeah, the cab fee because now I have like a discount on my cab fares. So I did make, well actually no, I made one cab fee back, which is fine. It's, you know, it's a little disappointing, but it's not disappointing. And here's why, because no one's going to start off making thousands and thousands of dollars. You have to build your way up to that. So if I was in a different mindset, I would be like, you know what, forget it, scrap everything, I'm done with this. But seeing as I set myself up mentally for the lows that happens in the beginning of owning a business and running a business, I'm not so much disappointed. I could be disappointed in that moment, 
but it's just a learning curve. It's something that I just need to improve on. It's like, okay, well, what can I do next? Because I got those seven sales, because I spoke up a little more. So now what do I do to make those seven sales, seven more sales? So it's a learning process. And while I didn't make the money that I set, the goal that I set for myself for this market, I am grateful that I made the sales that I did. And the good thing is, all three of my new products ended up having the sales. So I know that there's a market somewhere out there for those products. So I'm happy with that, that they sold. Getting to how I got swindled out of $5. I had two ladies come to my table and they were testing out my room sprays. My room sprays are $15 and she ended up buying the Cherry Blossom Breeze and she bought the Spa Day Delight. She asked if she can purchase the two room sprays for $25 because the total is 30 and not including the tax. So, and she was paying with cash. So she was like 25, you know, $5 off 25, 25. So at that point I was ready to go. I was tired, it was late in the day. So I said, why not? I'll go ahead and I'll give the discount. And I'm trying to figure it out and I'm like, hold on ma'am. And, and they're in a rush and they're trying, and she gives me the $25 and I end up giving her the bag and I don't know, I just didn't, how I got swindled was I didn't stand on ground and didn't put my foot down and say, no, there's no discounts here. There's no bargaining here. The price that you see is the price that you have to pay. I ended up giving her the two room sprays for $25 and I missed out on the $5. And yeah, that was, that was a learning experience as well. It's like, don't let people try and talk you out of your, your prices. If you set your prices and they can't afford to pay it, then that's not on you. That's on them, but stand your ground when it comes to your prices. So Lesson learned and next time I will not be doing that. I know I'm a nice person, but I also have another side to me that I think I need to use a little more when it comes to those types of situations. So that was my little swindled story. She got two room sprays for $25 and I had to eat that $5. But the final thing I'm going to do here and then I'm going to wrap up this little recap is Two things that shocked me. The first thing was the free samples. The free samples were actually a hit. I only bought a certain amount. So as you saw, I made a ton of them. I made a ton of them because I wanted to divide them throughout these next three markets. And then those are the same free samples that people are going to get when they make purchases as well. But I had made them and I didn't quite know what I wanted to do with the free samples, whether I wanted to leave them out on the table and people can just come and grab, or whether I wanted to put a free sample in their bag when they purchased them. So I was shocked that that was a hit and I'm happy that was a hit. So now that's going to be something that's going to be a part of my vendor table. And then the other thing I was shocked at was that my hit seller for the day was my passion sunrise candle and I might as well say scent because I had someone buy the wax melt and I had a bunch of people buy my candles so overall the market was a hit and a miss I did enjoy my time I didn't enjoy having to log everything up and down the stairs at the end of the day I did get some help from someone that I know in my in my neighborhood here. So he did help me bring up my tent and everything, but it was a hit and miss. I got some good feedback. I got some good notes from it. And I also met some good people. One of you, which I'm so sorry, I'm so bad at remembering names, but I met her on my way heading out waiting for my cab. And she was so sweet and so nice. And I'll say if you see me again, feel free to stop by and say hello. I am just like you. You remind me of me 
trying to like talk to people but she was so nice and she was out there and I believe she was a vendor out there too because she was packing up her stuff in the car but she was so nice to meet me and talk to for the brief moment so that was good to meet someone at the market there but other than that I just I enjoyed my time. I, even though I was tired, I enjoyed my time. I cannot wait for the next one. And I think that's just the energy of being a new business owner and putting yourself out there and doing these things. You get so excited. So I'm enjoying this rush of doing these markets. I have four more to go. I have two this month, one in November and one in December. And then I'm still signing up to more that come along. So I, my cat is crying right now because he wants to get in. But I am glad that I did this one. Glad that I experienced it. Will I do it again? If they pick me, I will definitely do it again. Because you never know. You can't really judge the market all the time based off of one one time doing it. Next up is Grand Bazaar, so I get a redo of Grand Bazaar. But yeah, that was pretty much it for this recap. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you could be notified when the next new video comes out. It really helps my channel to get out there and grow, and I'm able to do more of this content I kind of like doing the market contents, content a little more because it's something to show you guys even though this one didn't show much of the market. I always want to like give my insight on doing markets especially here in New York because there's not a lot of people that talk about the markets here in New York. So that was it for this video. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week and don't forget to show yourself a little more appreciation. So until next time, this is Tammy saying, take care, everyone.